dearest friends, thank you so much for being with us again. We have the privilege of learning tonight the Chavod Chana Zisa Bas Miriam Fega, in honor of Chana Zisa Bas Miriam Fega by Anonymous. We thank you so much. And every sponsorship helps us so much to keep on going strong and continuing to connect to Am Yisrael in the times that we're in right now. Let's sing one nigun before we go further. Hmm. <speaking in Hebrew> Da 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 Ay 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 da 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 mo da 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 mo da 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 di ay 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 ro 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 ay 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 please sing with me da 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 moi, ay da da da. Bom 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 bim bom. Da 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 da. Da 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 ay da di da do moi om ay. Do 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 moi da do. Da 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 ma e da di da di o yo yo e ro e da di da do da i da i da i ro e da 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 ma ma e da 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 ma e da da i da da a i da i da i da i da da i da da i da i da i da i da Oi ro 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 da i da i da i da i da di da di oi da i da i ro 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 da di da di di ro e da 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 ma yo da do da do da di da di da di da di da di Oh yo yo mo e yo yo mo mo ay yo mo mo. All right, Chaver asked for one more nigun. We'll do one more nigun. Mm. What's another good strong one that we can do right now? Something that really is in the right place. Nay day, 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 dum bum 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 Sing with me wherever you are. I lie, I lie, I lie, I lie, I I did it on by a mamma, I did it on by a mamma, did it on by mamma, 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 did I lie, did it on lie, 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 
Welcome, Chavra. Welcome to, to, to all of you, especially to, I see, I see so much family here. I see my, 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 my shul family, so many of members of, our, of my kehillah that I miss so much. Miss our Chavra so much, but I'm so proud of everyone. I'm so proud. Everyone is mamish doing their best. Everyone. There's not one person that I know from my Chavra our collective chavra, that's not doing their absolute best. So, yeshakoch to each and every one of you. Be'emet, each and every one of you. I would love to see your faces. So those of you that still haven't turned on your cameras, um, no pressure, but it'd be, it'd be beautiful. It'd be beautiful. It'd be very sweet. Thank you. Wow, look at that. So many more punin. Shaina punin. Okay, chavra. Okay, tonight, tonight, tonight. Tonight is very, very special. First of all, good Chodesh. Chodesh Tov Mevorach. And it's a very special week of Svirat Omer that we're beginning right now. A week that we celebrate very much in our house. The week of Tiferet. So there's a lot in the air. There's two parshas. But more than anything, there is a hunger in the air. And the hunger is only getting more and more and more real. And I want to address it tonight. And I want to say to everyone in here that I feel at home with each and every one of you. And therefore, we're, we're going to go there tonight. Tonight we're going there. You know, everyone is speaking about this new world that we're now entering into. It's a new world. Everyone's saying, you know, when the virus is over, that we're not going back to the same world. It's a different world. But you, you rarely hear anyone explaining what they exactly mean by that. It's, it's, it's a, probably a true statement. But to kind of explain what that means, people, that we're not saying. Where it's easy to say it's, it's a different world or that it's going to be a completely different world, but no one is explaining. No one is explaining what they mean, or, or no one's defining, no one's articulating what that looks like. So tonight I wanted to ask you if we have enough holy chutz, but to try to define what that means. What does this mean, the world is different? What does it mean we're going, the world that we're meeting when we're done with this insanity is a different world? Do we wait to show up to the post-corona world, expecting everything and everyone to just act and look different? Or do we do something here right now? The, the shaila is, where do we begin? And I know that this is a question that's very intense and intriguing and overwhelming. But I think that Hashem believes in us. I definitely believe in us. I only believe in us because I know Hashem believes in us. That... We are not blind, and we are not deaf, and our hearts are not sealed shut like a rock. We are absolutely attentive, very much with our eyes and ears open to Hashem and to each other. I believe it. And we just have to remind each other that that is what we're doing right now in this world. The shaila that we have is where do we begin to describe the world that we're going to go to? The world post-corona. Can you imagine going into a world, can you imagine anything being the same after this, this craziness? Chas v'chalila. 
חס וחלילה. No one, no one, no one, no one wants to feel that, and, and everyone speaks about the greatest fear is that we're going to go back and things are going to be like it was. But so that, again, it's great to say that, but the question is, what are you offering? What is the other thing? What is this other thing, this other world that we're plunging into right afterwards? So we have to, we have to answer this question on two different levels, and they're both going to involve the Parsha, and they're going to involve the Chodesh of Iyar. But at the end, we're going to get to something that's going to make... Um, that's going to make us have to really, 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 really dig deep. And maybe I think, you know, I'm just hoping that by the end, maybe I'll hear from some of you to have some kind of tachlis answers to some very big questions. But again, I know we can get there. So where are we right now? I want to share with you how we're going to answer these questions through something from the Lubavitcher Rebbe that I had the schut of learning this morning with the Chavruta, just a snippet of it. And after learning this morning with my Chavruta on the Parsha, I, I kind of realized that Hashem sent us exactly, exactly what, I, what my heart was trying to articulate. And I want you all to know that for me to speak like this about what I want to talk about right now and kind of be kind of calm and even smile, I commend myself. It's actually a very, very big accomplishment. I know I'm sounding pretty vague, but you'll see. So I want to show you a piece of text from the Lubavitcher Rebbe based on this week's Parsha, Parsha Tesriya. You all know that the names of the Parshiot are very, very interesting. Generally speaking, the parashas, like the Rebbe says in the beginning, Shema shel kol parasha batora, af shehu lakuach ma'amilim ha-potchot ota, nose et tochna shel ha-parasha kula. Generally speaking, the name of a parasha in the Torah, even though it's usually taken from the words with, with which the parasha opens with, it has within it the context of the whole parasha. Generally speaking, this is how it is. אולם, בפרשת תזריה, נראה לי חוראה שתוכן הפרשה מנוגד לחלוטין לשמה. But when it comes to our parasha, parasha תזריה, it seems that the name of the parasha is completely opposed to the context of what goes on later in the parasha. הפרשה כולה עוסקת בנגעי צרת לסוגיהם, שהם מן הטומאות החמורות ביותר. The parsha is mainly dealing with pains of afflictions, all types of afflictions, which are from the most severe tumot, impurities that exist in the world. Until it even says, like the Gemara in the Darim says, mitzora chashuv kemet. Someone that has tzorat, it's considered as if he's, he's dead, he's not even alive. Ve-han, now listen to these words, okay? Vehanitma b'tzara'at chayav l'shevet badad. And when you get stricken with tzarat, you have to sit badad, you have to sit alone, outside the machna. That doesn't seem like it's such a positive, beautiful thing, right? But what's the name of the parasha? Lilmat zot amila tazriya mevatet et ahefech agamur. Zriya shegolemet litzmicha leholadat davar chadash. But, but tazriya means to plant a seed, something that causes growth, to give birth to something new. I'm going to say that again three more times, okay? To give birth to something new. That was one, two. To give birth to something new. And shalosh. Zri'a means I am causing tzmicha to give birth to something new. That's what tazri'a is all about. That doesn't sound like tzara'at, which is mainly what the parsha is talking about. Bekach romezet ha-Torah 
על המשמעות הפנימית של הנגעים ושל עונשי התורה בכלל. Lubavitch Rebbe says, the Torah is alluding to us about the meaning, the inner meaning of any pain and affliction that you and I go through, and the punishments of the Torah in general. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hu Tachlit HaTov VeHachesed. God is all good, the best. Hu Eino Chafetz LeHaanish LeShem Onesh. God doesn't punish in order to punish, like I was talking with, with my Chibusa this morning, you know, you have those guys, the, 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 cop, the, um, the cops that have to give the tickets, the parking tickets, so they have a quota to fill, right? So the guy's not like, he doesn't have a quota, like, you know, the way I designed the world is that I have to give out 15,000 pains and afflictions by every other ER, so I got to fill it up by now. That's not how Nibbana Shalom works. Kol retzono lezakech et adam, the retzon of God is to purify man, lehasir mimeno et klipat avonotav, to remove from man, the klipa, of where he's at. Bezrat Hashem, soon you're going to be seeing a, an article published by one of our friends exactly on this issue. I'm very excited for it. Rebbe says, this is in order to purify and so make someone kosher, make someone ready to live a higher state of life, a higher state of living. That's what he. That, that's what the, the Bible Rebbe is saying is really what's happening when a nega, when an affliction comes down on you. It's really tazria. Just like tazria, you're planting a seed that will then co- cause some kind of growth and a birthing of something new. So too do punishments cause the birth of something new, living life higher. Living life more beautiful, living life more deeper. And he continues, Even the worst, and the worst punishments in the world, like death, really at the end of, at the end of it, end of the day, even death was meant to cause a tova for the sinner. Why? If there's a need to even remove sinner from this world, again, I hate that word sinner, but you, you understand what we're saying. The Rebbe is saying, even someone that's taken from this world because of his transgressions, it's for his benefit because why? He'll get Olam Haba. Get him out of here. He's stuck here. Get him out of here. So he'll get Olam Haba. Lachem, the Rebbe says. Dafka parasha zo nikret tazria. It's dafka for this reason that this parasha is called tazria. Why? Lelamdeno et mahutam hapnimit shel kol anegaim shealehem medubar behemshech parasha to teach us about the inner context of all the afflictions that we're going to be speaking about later in the parasha. What's the point of it? Hamatarahi, however, look at this last line, and please listen to my voice. You can close your eyes. Whatever is easier for you, whatever is, whatever works for you. Hamatarahi lehazria uleholid metziut chadasha baadam. The point is to plant a seed and to give birth to a new reality in man, woman. Yehudi Tahor Vetov Yoter, a pure and better Yid. If I had to take that right now and make as much of a pshat of possible, right, with all the infinite pain, the excruciating pain that so many people are going through right now, and befrat to our in America, where it's unbelievable what's going on over there, and our hearts and souls are, are just, are with everyone. What did the Rebbe just say about today? About today? The Rebbe said that Corona and all of its pain He's planting a seed 
inside each and every one of us for a brand new reality. It's giving birth to something new. It's giving birth to a deeper version of something. It's bringing light to a new reality, to a new world. We keep on saying the world has changed, the world has changed, but and, and, and we're not going back to the way the world was, but we don't understand what that means, even though it's true. Well, now we're beginning to taste what it means. What does it mean? It means that the Ribbono Shalom is setting the stage for what's known as a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift means, and it's happened a few times in the world, paradigm shift means that there's a state of consciousness. I, I know I might sound very... Venice Beach, Californian right now, but I'm trying to keep it down here. A paradigm shift means that there's a completely new wave of consciousness in the world and be frat by us Jewish people. Where does this wave of consciousness show up? Where, where do you see it? The tzaddikim have been on this wave of consciousness for years. The Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh has been preparing us for years. The Alter Rebbe has been preparing us for years. Rabbi Nachman, the Pia Setzner, all the tzaddikim, they've been preparing us for years to feel at home in order to adapt to this paradigm shift of consciousness. But where does it show up? In what area in our lives has it showed up the most? And I'm talking now as Yidin that are trying so hard to keep Torah and mitzvahs? Shul. HaKadosh Baruch Hu threw us out of Shul. You and I didn't do this. This was not our decision. No one should start feeling this zero guilt over here. You and I should not feel guilty about this. The Ribbono Shel Olam threw Am Yisrael out of Shul. This is something we spoke about a few weeks ago in, uh, maybe it was the Shabbos HaGadol, I don't remember exactly. But the reality is, and it's not a reality that you and I created, and that's what's important to remember. The reality is, is that if I want to be in tune with a paradigm shift of consciousness, the Ribbono Shalelam threw you and I out of Shul. Now let's talk for a second about the point of shul and the purpose of shul. But remember the Rebbe's words. Hashem threw us out of shul in order to give birth to something much, much more beautiful, to something much more special, to a much better version of whatever it is that we had, right? A shul is based on a concept called Ohel Moed. What's a Moed? A Moed, Ohel Moed is a tent of meeting. A Moed, a Ohel Moed is a place where you meet, where you come together. It's a place of meeting. Now, what, is that? what does that mean basically more or less? It means that in Shul, the point of it was like Moshe Rabbeinu went to go meet God at Ol Moed. Moshe Rabbeinu did not just meet God at Ol Moed. Remember what the tzaddikim say? Whose voice, when God spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu, whose voice did it sound like? It sounded like Moshe Rabbeinu's voice. Or it sounded like Amram's voice, his father's voice. Zotomeret. That when a person is essentially the Beit HaMikdash and this place of meeting HaKadosh Baruch Hu was set up for a purpose that we all know already has been tremendously, tremendously lacking everywhere, 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 everywhere. And what's that purpose? To get to know yourself, to meet yourself, to be in tune with yourself. So uh, this is where I'm stuck. And I'll share with you where I'm stuck and how I'm going to get out of this tonight with all of you. Because I love you all so much. I know you love me, so it's all good. There's only love in this, hopefully in this room and on the screen. And I'm feeling a lot of love because I've been talking to my Rebbe almost every day the last week or so, and I'm just like, Baruch Hashem. There are two ways of looking at, at what, I'm, what I've been describing. There's a Berdichever way of looking at it, 
And then there's a different way. Let's start with the Bidditcher way. Remember the story, Reb Levi Yitzhak of Bidditcher is walking down the street and he sees a guy with a talus and tefillin and he's working and he's harnessing the horses, something like that. It's one of those versions of the stories. And uh, Misnagin walks by and he says, look at this disgusting, look, look at this guy. While he has talus and tefillin on, this is what he's busy with. And the Bidditcher is saying, we're bonished to him, look at your Yidin even while they're milking the cows or whatever. I just messed up the story completely, but the point is, even when they're milking the cows, they're thinking about you, right? So I thought, of, I'd have to force myself quite often sometimes when I go into certain shuls, and the first thing that greets you in the shuls are all the Aloné Shabbat. You know what Aloné Shabbat are? Those are like the, uh, the Heilige Reader's Digest of 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 the, of the from world, all these different magazines, but but they're holy, so they're not magazines, right? But all these articles and the truth is they're filled with some of it. Some of it is beautiful stuff. <clears throat> it's just one one problem. Do you bring a a people's magazine when you go on a date? Do you bring a bottle of alcohol to take a break in the middle of a date to go and have a schnapps in the corner? You see, Chavran, shul became, a, unfortunately, more a cultural gathering than an experience of meeting yourself and meeting a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And guess what? It's not completely our fault either. 2,000 years of exile, 6 million in ovens will do that to you. So again, this shmuz is not to Khalila make us feel bad or guilty about anything. It's an attempt to try to see where there's a tazria, where we can allow, where we can enable a tazria, because there's a big mitzayra in the world. There's a big tzarat in the world. And people are dropping left and right. And there's so much pain. And there are thousands of orphans. And hundreds of widows. So there's a, there's a tzarat. The reason we're going this route is because the place that we thought we had taken care of Hashem Yisbarach said, I love you enough to kick you out of here so that you will figure out and you'll remember what the point of a Beit HaMikdash, a Beit Knesset, is all about. There are many, 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 many more examples that we could go to of pointing things out that are wrong. I'm not interested as fun as an enticing and as, and as cute as that would be, that's not the point either. The point again is, are we allowing a tazria through all the tzarat? Are we allowing it? Are we allowing it to happen? And I think that it takes so much vulnerability and so much of meeting a place that we're not used to in order to allow this new wave of consciousness, something new, something that never was before. I got very excited in the beginning, the first week when this was happening, just petrified as I was, I also got very excited spiritually because I felt that, yeah, there's certain shilas that were never asked before. There's going to be this, this huge revolution in rabbinic liturgy, in rabbinic leadership. And um, here's where I'm at. I'm, I'm very, very heartbroken because I'm on a bunch of different groups of rabbis and WhatsApp messages and letters. And again, kulam ahuvim, kulam, kulam kedoshim. No one, no, one is, no one is bad, but we can't afford to just not be bad anymore. 
we can't afford to not listen to what's going on. And unfortunately, over 90%, and I'm not exaggerating at all, I'm actually lowering the percentage. Mamish, 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 maybe 95% of the, of the instructions that the rabbis are receiving have to do with mere pesot minyanim, how far you have to stand from each other in an open yard with 19 people, and all these new things about a Sefer Torah, which the guidelines keep on changing by the day. They changed again. We just got another letter half hour ago, an hour and a half ago. It changed again. And I think it's because those are not... Of course we have to know halacha, and of course we have to know how to act. But I had, I had, I had this whole thing tonight, I realized, why aren't the Rabbanim today writing the tshuvas of the neshama, of the nefesh, of what are we supposed, how are we supposed to internalize what's going on? What has happened that every shul in the world is closed? What does that really mean? Does it mean I have to figure out a way to stand on a balcony to make sure I hear someone and they could see me and I could say, Amen? I don't believe that that is the price of Corona. But the reason why these things aren't being addressed, besides one person that I know of, my Rebbe, the reason why these things aren't really being addressed, Begadol, is because no one's asking this from the Rabbanim. No one's seeking this out from the leadership. It's as if the whole Tazria is just, let's figure out how we could still do the right thing in a different way and a way that's kosher according to Misra Rabriyut. My Hevra, you know that it's got to be more than that. You, you know, you under, and that's why so many of my Hevra here, who, who I love so much, have been asking me a lot of questions about how I feel about the whole concept of minions. I'm positive that some of the minions right now are beautiful. I'm, I'm certain about it. I have no doubt. I'm sure the sensation that some people have about being able to say Yehei Shmei Rabba Mevarach is something that was lacking inside tremendously. En li shun safek. I just don't believe that that is the Ikar Voda of listening to what's going on in the world and trying to understand what the Ribbon HaShleilam is telling us. And I think that it takes not just guts, but it takes a certain tchuna. It takes a, t a certain trait in order to begin to hear the new rhythm, the new sound, whatever the hitchatshut in the Bria, whatever the renewal in creation is all about. You don't need to be really in tune with yourself and be close to yourself and close to Hashem in order to know how to run a mere peset minion. You don't need to. You just get some information and you apply it. But that's still it's a dat. It's tov, but it's it's a das. What was that place called that we were banished from? What tree didn't we touch that we should have? It's a chayim is where you and I are hoping that we're connecting to. And Eitz HaChaim begins in a place of Hoda'a, not just being thankful. Hoda'a means to be mode that I don't know. Hashem Yisbarach, you gave me all the Sfarim in the world. I know how to be a Yid in every single crazy, wacky circumstance. I know how to be a Yid when Magefa falls down on me. I know how to be a Jew that counts Svirat the Omer while he's driving to Australia. I know how to teach my children about Paro and the Mitzrim and Leo Seder because I, I have all the greatest books. I, I know all these things. I have all, I have all the information. I could have all of the information and I could still be disconnected 
from me. I can be disconnected from the piece of Elokut that's inside of me. So it begins, Hoda'a, gratitude, is the same language as mode. Mode means that I admit. One of my favorite answers that Rabbi Shlomo Krabach gave in the early 80s to some journalist, I forget where it is, I'm going to find it. They asked him, what do you think the, what do you think the world should do now? Like, what do you think should be? How, how do you think the Jewish people should, where should they go? What should they do? So he said like this, he says, I think every conservative, reform, orthodox, you name it, rabbi, comes together with all their convictions, they walk up to the Kotel, and they say, Ribbono Shalelam, we're so sure that we're right, but we don't know anything. Ooh, how threatening is that statement, huh? Wow. That's a threat. Even I freak myself out right now. That's a very, that's a very threatening statement, right? But you know, friends, I always say, Yaakov Avinu gave us a very clear hint as to how to do this. Yaakov Avinu has a dream. He goes to sleep and he has a dream. And when he wakes up, he says, this is the Beit Elohim. This is the house of God. And then what does he say? Va'anochi lo yadati. This is Yaakov Avinu, Bait Shlishi. The third base of Mikdash begins from a place where I admit, Ribbono Shalom, I am not sure how to allow and enable you to lehazria a new seed into me of hitchachut, of something new, with all the beautiful tires I have, with all the vartlach that I have. I don't really know. And Hashem Yisbarach, you could hear him on the other side saying, Oh, my child, I've been waiting for you to see that your whole life. Why were you under the assumption that you were supposed to know how to do everything in this crazy world? Why were you under the assumption that you were to know already how to react and, and how to not react? And... Can you imagine, Chava, think about this. Those of you that have kids that have already left the home or they're about to leave the home, not because of fights or anything, just because of age, when your child doesn't need you anymore? Have any of you experienced that when your children stop asking you questions? <laughs> you don't have to raise your hands. It happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. Not to me, mom. I, I still ask for everything, right? But a, a, a parent is chalishing for the child to come and say, you know, mommy, daddy, ima, abba, I, I don't know. But what are we doing, unfortunately, with a lot of this corona stuff? Oh, we, 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 we know. We know. We know how to do it. However, you, you realize that this is not the end of the corona. I, I hate to say this, but any doctor you speak to, any professional, this is, this is the beginning of a much, much longer process. We're going to be having guidelines changed five million times, but you know what? Guide you know which guidelines never ever change, ever change. About minyanim they'll change. About shuls they'll change. About schools and markets and gatherings those things will all change. But the guideline to meet your Creator, which means to meet yourself. That never changes. And Hashem has given us all the time and all the space in our homes to do that exact avoda. Some rabbinin will say that it's halachically wrong in certain neighborhoods to go about and go about certain minyanim, for sure in certain places. It's Yeragabal By here in Efrat, I don't think it's a halachic problem. But forget about that for a second. I'm talking about an Eitz Chaim level, an Ashkafik Indian. I, I'm much more concerned about us not taking the opportunity to get to know that which we think we know, which is us. 
And the place that we were supposed to meet ourselves, shuls, we have to get it together, Chavar. We have to get it together. Everywhere, across the board. Across, I'm praying they don't open shuls for a while. I'm, I'm being very serious. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that for, for more, more time, I, Khalila don't want to think that we were thrown out of shul for five weeks to go back to anything similar without this deep tazria in our being, without enabling Hashem to parent us, without seeking out and admitting, I, I thought I knew, but apparently I didn't because there's still a lot of hatred in the world. There's still a lot of Jews that hate non-Jews, a lot of non-Jews that hate Jews. Everyone's right, everyone's wrong. There's still too many broken families in the world. I'm chalishing for a world. I want to I wanna be with people that are so excited to finally admit that they're not sure what to do. Now, there was a piece that I saw to connect this really to Chodesh at Iyar, because I think that it's a huge, huge refu'ah this place of admitting that we really don't have it down. It's a huge refua. It's a huge, tremendous healing. And, you know, Chodesh Iyar, everyone knows the famous Rashi tables. What is Iyar? Ani Hashem Rofecha. I am Hashem, your healer. Where does it come from? Where does, where does the, that the, all the Hasidic Shesfarim quote this, where, does, where do these words, Ani Hashem Rofecha, come from? So it comes from in Parashat B'Shalach. What does it say over there? Kol ha-machala asher samti b'mitzrayim lo asim alecha, ki ani Hashem rofecha, right? Oh, the, the illness that I placed on Egyptians, I won't place on you because I am Hashem your healer. Because I am Hashem your healer. Very interesting. This might be like, I heard this beautiful word from my friend Rabbi Ami Silver. This really touched my heart deeply. And for those of you that, that don't know Rabbi Ami, Kedai Me'od, to tune into his beautiful, beautiful, passionate Torah. Find him online, Rabbi Ami Silver. So he had said that you have to, you have to think for a second about what's going on in this scene where Hashem says, because I'm your healer. Where are we? So B'nai Israel just left Egypt there, and they just crossed the Amsuf, right? And all of a sudden, what, what are they missing? Water. It's like I think about us. We went through the six million. We came to Eretz Yisrael. And what are we missing? We're too scared to admit that we're missing a key ingredient before the base of Migdash comes down. And what's that key ingredient? Mi'ani. So Rav Ami said something so beautiful. He said that they, they, they went through all these amazing tests and they crossed them and all these miracles were happening to them. And then all of a sudden, like we said, they don't have water. And they don't know how they're going to survive. The water in the desert was bitter. They have no idea how they're going to make it, right? And Hashem Mizbarach tells Moshe Rabbeinu to hamtik et amayim, right? To sweeten the water. And only then they continue their journey to Har Sinai. So Rav Ami said that it seems that before receiving the Torah, Bnei Israel had to experience Hashem as their healer. They had to experience that. You and I are in Svirat Omer, Chodesh Iyar, Ani Hashem Rofecha, are we going to enable Hashem Yisbarach to be our healer or not? How much do you need Hashem? Tachlis. How much do I need Hashem? How much am I going to enable God to be my healer? The Torahs of Reb Nachman specifically address this concept. Really, all the tzaddikim do. 
But the Torahs of Rabbi Nachman really, really touch upon this, that the more that a person does his photos, the more they realize that the only healer they have is Rabbi Shleilam, and that's all they really need in this world. They need a personal relationship with God, a real, passionate, holy relationship with God. And Kamuvan, that can happen anywhere. But the Ruach of Eretz Yisrael is the place where that relationship goes in deepest, smoothest, in the most refined way, in the most refined and precious way. I believe with all my heart and soul that the second that we push rabbinic leadership to go to the place of I don't know, not I don't know how to make a minion in conditions like this, but I'm talking about I don't know how to meet myself. I don't know how to meet Hashem. I don't know what that means. I'll tell you, Chavra. A father called me two days ago. This happens all the time. He said to me, listen, I have whatever, a bunch of kids, two of my kids, nothing to do with God. Nothing. And uh, I tell them all the time, you, know, you got to try. You got to put in the work. You're not just going to feel it. You got to put in the work and then you'll feel it. And my kids always say to me, this person said, and what about you? How do you, how, how, how did you do it? I just know it. I just know it. I do it. So I said to, so this person said to me, Shlomo, I, I need an aid. So how do I get to my kids? How do I get to the heart of my kids? By the way, this is Mamish, every family, everyone. And it might've been many of us at a certain point in life as well. Right. The question's always like, how do I get to my kids? I'm so scared of my kids. So I asked this person, I said, well, don't, don't you think that if you, if you really knew how it worked for you, you'd be able to give it over to your, to your kid? He said, yeah, at least I could tell him how it worked for me. So then he said to me, so then I said to him, well, when, when did you, when was the last time you, you, you spoke to Hashem? He's like, what, you mean like Davin? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. You see, davening was supposed to be, he spoke to this. Davening was supposed to be Ohel Mo'ed. That's what it was meant for. That's what it was meant for. So I told my friend, I said, listen, before you and I discuss how to talk to your children, you have to figure out if you really want them to be in a relationship with God, but that means that you have to figure out if you want to be in a relationship with God. I didn't know if he'd never, if he would curse me, never talk to me again. A few hours later, I get the sweetest, most heartbreaking text message from him. He says to me, I cannot thank you enough. I can't thank you enough, Shlomo. I can't. But it's, it's me. I'm saying the same thing to myself. I just want to make it crystal clear. I want to join you in telling the Ribbon Shalaylam, Achen Yesh. Because I believe that the way to get back to Gan Eden is not by figuring out all the answers, it's by admitting that we don't have them and by showing the Ribbon Shalom and ourselves that even though we don't have the answers, we want it so badly. We don't know how to keep our children really interested in Yiddishkeit. We don't know how to completely transform shuls. We don't know how to completely change all these things and make every shul an oil more. We don't, we don't know. We have all these beautiful things, but we don't, we don't know exactly. But isn't that the point? How many times have you seen in the Sparim, Tachlis Hayidiya Shiloneida? That the point and purpose of that is to come to the level of that you don't know. So it takes obviously, tremendous vulnerability. It takes holy chutzpah, but it takes a good ear. And like the Rebbe told us in the beginning of the shir with the sicha tonight, Tazriya is the name of the parsha of Tzara'at, because really, the Tzara'at, the afflictions that you and I go through, they are mazriya. They're putting seeds into us to bring something new out into the world. Are we adamant on allowing a Bria Chadasha to form from us? 
By the way, you know who usually stops us more than anyone from thinking like this or acting like this? The people that we're closest to in life. The guy sitting next to him in shul. The cousin. The person that knows me better. Ah, you're going through a Shana Aleph, uh, you know. What was that song of Blue Fringe? What was that song? Flipping out. You're flipping out. You see, you sound, you're flipping out. Alavai, alavai, we should flip out. <laughs> we should, alavai, flip out from all the places that don't allow us to go to the place that we want to the most, just to be present and conscious and aware of who we really are, to be in touch with our emotions. Don't you see that all the workshops of all the non-Jewish gedolim that are talking about mindfulness, they're all packed, swamped with yidin, with deep yidin, because that's what they want. That's what we really want. That's what we really, really want. It may not sound from, but that's what we want. Today I got an email from a Hasidish younger man from Munsi. The guy says, you could tell by the way he, he wrote that, that he, in an email that he did not receive, he didn't get regular popular education, proper, you know, American education. You could barely, his letter was, was like an, an eight-year-old wrote me an email. I could cry a river saying he, he got onto one of the programs recently with Rev Weinberger. This, and he's saying, I'm telling you, we all want this, all of all of, all, of, all of Hasidim. We, this is what we really want. This is what we really want. We really want this new hischachus, this something that never was before. So Hashem is Barach, in His infinite mercy, threw us out of a place that we were under the illusion that we knew how to be like in there. What compassion. What a beautiful, amazing, compassionate move. Hashem says, I, I know that you don't really want to be like this on our dates. I know you don't want to come inside and want the Reader's Digest to a date with me. I know it. I know you don't want to shove a bottle of schnapps in your suit jacket while you and I are on a date and then say, I have to go to the bathroom for a second. I know that you don't want to have a cell phone with you while you come and have a date and you keep on checking text messages. I know the I know the real you so I'm, so so let's just let's just Hashem is saying let's do let's make it a little bit clearer. Take the time. Reestablish it. Go there. Be with yourself. My Rebbe says the avoda now is to be alone in tefillah, and he says it's lechatchila, not bedi eved. This is the lechatchila today. This is the lechatchila today. Again, I know that every person that's davening, in any level, I'm sure it's kadosh. I'm positive it's kadosh. But dor le dor yeshabach maasecha. Every generation is given a chance for their own mesirus nefesh. So Hashem Yisbarach did it for us already. He said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do my serious nefesh for you. Guys, get out of here. You realize there's no shul for five, six weeks? All shuls are closed? Get out of here. And it's okay. I'm okay, Hashem was saying. I already had two temples. I had two base on Migdashes. And, I, and even that wasn't working for me. I want to make sure that when you build the third one, that you understand how precious it is to meet each other. What an ohel mo'ed is. Let me be your doctor. Ani Hashem rofecha. Chodesh iyar. Before we receive the Torah, the Shavuos, we have to go through this place of like the Yidin, like my friend Rev Ami said, we have to go through this place. And to cut, your, however, we have to cut ourselves slack also. This is, we're carrying trauma of thousands of years on us. Thousands of years. This is not like this is not like one of our things that we messed up. This is thousands of years of galut, of pain, of of 
bereaved parents trying to figure out what God is doing with them. We're all in this together. No one is guilty. Kula mahuvim. No one's guilty, but no one is permitted to ignore. No one is permitted to ignore a greater picture. No one is permitted to block off this amazing holy opportunity that never, ever existed before. Not just in the last hundred years. Even Magay thought that were dangerous in the past, like it is now, first of all, there were never as many shuls as there were as there are now. There was never like this before. Hashem is Baruch is saying, when you guys are going to come back to shul, hopefully shvus, hopefully. I want you to show up. When you come back to shul, I want us to show up. And then, Chavra. Then, then. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Atishbi, Eliyahu Hagiladi, Eliyahu Hagiladi, Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Atishbi, Eliyahu Hagiladi, Eliyahu Hagiladi. Be Mehera, Yahweh Eleinu. We don't even know what it's going to look like, and that's okay as well. We don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know what Shua is going to look like. We don't know who we're going to look like. We don't know what the experience is going to look like. But Gevald, are we excited to finally admit that that is okay? That actually may be exactly what the Rebbe Nishtayim was waiting, just like every parent is waiting, is chalishing for their child to need them and say, Abba, Ima, Mom, Dad, I can't get your help with this. And, in, and inside the parent's heart, they're saying, oh boy, I waited so many years to hear those words. Good Chodesh, good Shabbos, good everything. Let's keep on winning. We are winning. Let's allow this new birth to happen. Don't clog it. Let's not clog it and try to make all the sense of it. Let it be, to paraphrase somebody. Let it just be. Let it flow. Let it be a... let ourselves be a halal panui. And the way that you become a halal panui, an open space, the more and more that you do, the more and more that you meet Hashem in your corner, in your room, in your office, while you're davening. Don't feel bad about this time that you have. Yesterday, my Rebbe said to me, Rev Weinberger said to me, uh, he left a message, he said, ah, Shlema, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you yet. You know, I'm davening now alone at home and I'm, I'm I'm having such long shachris. It's, it's unbelievable. Don't feel guilty. This is the time for this right now. This is the time for this. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our kinderlach. We owe it to our children. We owe it to our children to go to this place, this very vulnerable place, because over there, that's where Hashem can say, oh, there's space for me here to put a new zera, a tazria. Chaim, everybody. Good Shabbos.